<laughs> We're live. Oh, hi, everybody. Welcome to a Friday live tutorial. Thank you guys so much for dropping by. You'll have to excuse my uh, narration voice today. <laughs> I've been a little under the weather. Um, and uh, so it sounds I sound much worse than I actually am. So I apologize for that in advance, but I do have my hot tea. I've got a whole pot of it next to me here and I have yarn and it's raining outside and I honestly could be in a better mood. So I hope you're all in the mood to do a little fun crochet. We thought we would make a fun indoor toy today because uh, we haven't done a toy in a little while. It's the perfect day to sit and play with something indoor, especially if you've got kids or pets and they can't go outside. And it's a great excuse to use some of this Burnat blanket yarn. Um, some of you will recall I got this just a little while ago at the beginning of the year. I found it at Walmart. Um, it's a Burnet blanket. It's called Twist. And I like it because it's twisting colors that also kind of keep changing all the way through the ball. So I had to pick up a, a big skein of it. Um, it's a size six, super bulky or bulky. It depends on when the label was printed. Some of them say super bulky, some of them say bulky, but most importantly, it's a size six. And it's this kind of thickness. So if I were to just wrap it around my finger, I've got um, between, let's say, I'll take the end of my knuckle and I will get Ooh, almost five wraps. That's how thick it is. So from the end of my last knuckle to the end of my finger, almost five wraps. It's nice and fluffy. Um, it doesn't feel quite as thick as a regular Burnett blanket yarn, but um, it'll do the trick. It definitely falls into the size six bulky category. So I'm going to be using some of this today. We won't use the whole ball, obviously. We're going to make a small play ball, and uh, this will probably use up about a third of this. So maybe about 100 grams all together. Um, that would be ooh, about 166 yards or 166 meters of the Burnett um, size six bulky. So that's what we're going to be using today. You're going to want some stuffing. I've got a pillow next to me, so I'm going to be sort of emptying an old pillow and using the, the stuffing for the ball. But you can use um, chopped up socks or t-shirts or uh, sort of recycle stuff if you want to use fabric scraps for the stuff of your ball or even leftover yarn that you don't particularly like anymore. Any of those things are fine stuffing for this little toy. And we are definitely going to want a big hook. So I've got my eight millimeter out. This is also known as an L or an 11, um, but eight millimeter L or 11. You can use a hook size up or down from this, um, depending on how tight your tension is. So if you tend to crochet really tightly, you can use a slightly larger hook. If you tend to crochet really loosely, you might want to use a smaller hook. You're gonna want a yarn needle with a big eye so that you can fit your yarn through it. And of course, a pair of scissors. And that's all you really need to get started. So I'm gonna start moving some of this stuff out of the way. Don't need my scissors yet or my needle, but I do want to have my yarn and my hook. So. I'm going to pull some of this out and find the end. Now, if you don't need bulky weight yarn, I noticed a couple people sort of mentioning in the chat, in the comments here just before we got going today that you didn't have any bulky weight on hand. Um, but if you wanted to still do this along with me, you can use two strands of a regular size for yarn held together. That'll be just fine. It'll approximate the size of a bulky weight yarn. And because this is a toy and it's not something super... Um, special or important, this is just meant to be thrown around and had fun with, um, the, the two strands of yarn held together will be perfect. Um, that's pretty much what this is. If you kind of unwind this twist, you see there's three ply in this Burnett twist that makes up this thick blanket yarn. And each of these three little ply are much skinnier um, and very squishable than a size four medium weight yarn. So two strands of medium weight yarn held together would approximate this quite well. So you can jump into your, your scrap heap, grab a couple of those if you wanna make this along with us and uh, use the same hook. So the same hook size, eight millimeter hook. I'm gonna have a little sip of my tea here. Ooh, yum, 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 yum. All right. We are going to begin with a cinch circle. And I think it's really fun to show how to do a cinch circle using the bulky weight yarn, especially when it's a bit fluffy, because you have to sort of change um, how rough you are with it. So you start by making a loop, put your hook through the loop, grab that yarn, pull up a loop on your hook, 
and then chain one, that chain one sort of cures it. So it's the same way if you're used to making cinch circles, it's exactly the same formula. Um, you wanna leave a nice long short tail so that you can work over top of it. So you have something to cinch it up with later, but you wanna be a little gentler. Um, you don't wanna to pull too tightly because some bulky weight yarns aren't really strong. So when you go to sort of cinch the whole thing shut, just be a little gentler with it. And I'll show you what that looks like when we get there. We're gonna use the single crochet stitch today. So single crochet all the way. We're going to work eight single crochets to begin into our cinch circle. So eight of those. Make sure you're working over top of that little short tail. So as you're working, you're working over top of it and through the whole circle. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We got a rainy day bell for you. Aww. <clears throat> we have a super chat from L. L. Hi, L. Super chat <laughs> from, you. from the bunny money. <laughs> L says, uh, making bulky premier yarn parfait layers. Ooh. It's Jada. Oh, that's some of that stuff I just got. Jada, have hot lemon and honey. It's an instant cure. I need that bunny mug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, isn't that cute? I tip it a little more, but my 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 tea's in it. Um, yes, I love hot lemon and honey. I I um I think I may have one of those mm -hmm. uh, a little later. Um, I think we have lemon. I'm not sure. We might have. Oh lime. boy. Maybe we don't have any lemon. We may have run out. I don't we, really want to go have, up this rain to get it. We do any. have the honey. <laughs> we have the honey. I could just have honey. That would be fine. You just have straight honey <laughs> with a spoon. Uh, yeah. That's <laughs> <it>. <laughs> Thank you, L. I like that idea. All right. Once we have eight single crochet worked into our little cinch circle, you're going to take your short tail and you might want to pull up on your hook, get your hook out of the way. This is something I like to do when I'm working with the bulky weight yarn. So I grab the stitch. So the last stitch I made, I kind of gently pinch it between my thumb and my forefinger. I take that short tail and then I pull gently on the short tail, only kind of giving it about a couple centimeters or an inch every time I pull, because I don't want to run the risk of snapping it because sometimes this yarn that is made up of very small little ply isn't as strong as other yarn that's very tightly wound together. So you wanna pull gently on it. And I find if you hold on to those, that last stitch, it'll cinch up nice and neat and tidy. So there we go, we're all cinched up. You can put our hook back in our loop here. I'm going to work over top of my short tail. You can leave yours out to the bottom. You don't even have to weave it in because it's going to end up on the inside of your ball. Um, but you can work over it if you want, or you can just, like I say, tuck it to the back. In fact, maybe I will just tuck it to the back. Uh, when you're working with bulky weight yarn, your stitches aren't always as easy to see. So I'm going to just highlight a couple with the hook. That's the first stitch. I've just put my hook through it. And then right next to it, that's the next stitch. There's my hook going through it. Right next to it, there's the next stitch. So you're gonna get used to feeling where the stitches are. And you can also kind of feel it with your fingers. So if you're not sure where the next stitch is, just take a second and try to get your thumb and forefinger to meet underneath the stitch. We're gonna work two single crochet into each of these stitches all the way around. So we're gonna go from a count of eight to a count of 16. If you have trouble counting or you lose track or you've got lots of distractions around you, you might wanna take a cinch, uh, I should say a safety pin or a piece of yarn or a stitch marker and just mark that last stitch you made and that will give you an idea of where the last stitch is that you're gonna work into. Otherwise you can just sort of count. Um, if you were to go to mark, mark it, let me just grab a safety pin here. Ding, ding. We have a rainy day super chat Aww. from Catherine. Catherine, thank you. <clears throat> Catherine says, hi, my lovely puppy sitters. <laughs> Elle's watching. <laughs> Ellie, Ellie, the dog. Ellie's watching. Yeah, Aww. Ellie's watching us today. Hi, hi Ellie. Ellie. <laughs> Hello, Ellie. Aww. I love that. That is so cute. Okay, so I've just marked my last stitch. I've marked half of it with a safety pin. So if that helps you so that you don't have to keep counting all the way around, you might wanna do that. And then of course, once you get to that stitch, you know it's the last one, you're gonna work two single crochet into that. Just remove the stitch marker when you get there. And that's the last stitch 
in the row that you need to worry about. So we're gonna work two single crochet into each stitch all the way around. And like I said, you can work over your short tail or you can work, we'll just sort of stuck to the back and leave it hanging. Be sure to find the next stitch. So if you're still getting used to the size of the stitches and you're not totally sure where to stick your hook next, just pause after you do your two single crochet and just grab your thumb and forefinger, try to find the next stitch and that will help you so that you don't end up skipping any. Two single crochet in each stitch all the way around. We're gonna go up to 16 stitches. And I love, I love the little, <laughs> I know it drives some people crazy, but I love the little squeak that you get when you're working with this kind of yarn. It's polyester, so it's, it's got a little bit of a squeak to it when you're working with, uh, especially if you're working with a plastic hook like I am. And I don't know, I kind of find that it sounds like a, a little, a quiet little rocking chair, you know, that, that sound your grandmother's rocking chair would make. All right, I'm back to the last stitch in the row. I'm gonna take my, my little stitch marker out, work the last two single crochet into that stitch. And I know that I have 16, so I've completed row two. I have 16 stitches all the way around. We're just working in the round. So I'm gonna pull up on my hook. I'm gonna put my stitch marker in on the last stitch that I just made just so I don't have to count. Put my hook back in. And we're gonna begin row three in the very first stitch we made in row two. Row three, we are going to increase from 16 to 24 stitches. So the little pattern is two single crochet into the first stitch. And a single crochet into the next stitch. So two, one, two, one, two, one, all the way around. So next stitch, two single crochet. And the next stitch, one single crochet. And this little repeating pattern of two, one, two, one, all the way around will take us from 16 to 24 stitches. Pause for a sip of tea. Oh my gosh, that is so nice, okay. <laughs> Maybe you can mention the exact type of yarn in case anyone wants to use the same stuff. Well, if anybody's a bit, a bit uh, late. Yeah, I'm using, um, <laughs> let me just pull some more of it out here. I'm using a Burnett Blanket Twist, and this is 100% polyester, size six, bulky or super bulky. And the name of this one is called Making Waves. So it's a really pretty combination of some blues and greens, which is why I was drawn to it. it does kind of look like water, it's really pretty. <laughs> MJM says, um, in Newfoundland, Ooh. they're getting rain, snow, ice fog, bits of sun. Newfoundland can't make up its mind. I was going to say, it sounds like a typical day in Newfoundland. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of hellos from all over the world, all over the United States. There's a lot of there's a lot of um, chat today for, um, in what looks like, um, I'm not sure because like, I cannot read this language, but I think it's Arabic or something oh, neat. like that. So hello to everyone that's from that side of the planet. <laughs> I wish I could read your comments, but I'm gonna have to learn that language. <laughs> We've got a lot of languages to learn. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, there was also some um, Asian. Neato. Yeah. Well, hello everybody. Hello to everyone. <laughs> Thank you so much for spending some time with us. All right, I've just finished row three. We are up to 24 stitches. So we began with a base of eight single crochet. Row two was 16 single crochet. Row three is 24 single crochet. We're gonna to continue to increase. I'm also gonna mark my last stitch again with my little safety pin here. So I know that's the last stitch in the row. So when I get to it, my row is finished. I'm gonna put my hook back in my loop. The increase pattern is now two single crochet into the first stitch, a single crochet into each of the next two stitches. So two, one, one, two, one, one, all the way around. That's gonna take us from 24 stitches up to 32. So we begin with two single crochet. 
all worked into the same stitch. And then a single crochet into each of the next two stitches. So just one single crochet followed by another. And then the little repeater pattern starts all over again. Two single crochet into the next stitch. Squeak, squeak, squeak. <laughs> oh, that reminds me. Ding, ding. We had a super chat come in a second ago from Tina. Hi, Tina. Thank you. Tina says, you're precious. <laughs> Dogs here hopeful. Aw. So, um... <laughs> I guess they're hopeful for the new ball, the new, toy, yes. the new toy they're getting. Oh my gosh. The, yes, the pets are going to love this. I'm just warning you ahead of time. Yeah, You're going to find it everywhere. It's going to be stuffed underneath cabinets. <laughs> and remember, since uh, you're making this from scratch, you could always put a little bell in it inside yeah. or something that knocks around. A little bell, a little shaker. Yeah, a little shaker, rice. If you're going to give it to your cat, maybe just a smidgen of catnip. Just a tiny bit. Oh, before you get into your next... Uh... Oh, I love that little bell. <laughs> That's our happy rainy day. It sounds so sound. sweet on a rainy day. We have a super chat from the bunny mummy. Oh, hi, Al. Thank you again. <laughs> Al says, nephews loved the dinosaur and rattle eggs in their Easter baskets. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jada, for all the cool toy tutorials. Aww. These balls will be next for them. I love these things. I love to make crochet balls. I love making toys in general. Toys are a lot of fun to make, so I'm so especially, glad that somebody else is enjoying especially them Especially indoor things Yes, because, you know, kids... Kids want to, they want to play and they're always told, take it outside. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes they need, they need indoor toys. We, we, uh, let me just, that reminds me. We did this one last, was this last summer? I think it was. Dizzy says the dogs love the flying disc. I was going to say, we made this one yeah. last summer and I, I love this, this flying disc. This is great for the kids and the pets too. It's soft, so it's not going to hurt anybody's noggin. Um, and uh, I made or it out of cotton lamps. or the lamps. Yeah, it'll just it'll just collapse if it comes into some contact with something hard. Um, and of course, the dogs can grab it in their teeth, and it's not going to hurt their little noses when they they jump up and grab it out of the air. But it's great for the kids. Um, making it out of cotton, you can sort of play with it um, outside. It can get wet. You can throw you can throw it in the washing machine, wash it, toss it in the dryer. Um, and it was a fun little scrap project. I used up all my colors. On this, but yeah, flying disc, another great indoor toy or outdoor, whatever's it works outdoor yeah. too. Yeah, for anyone who's interested who hasn't seen that one, I'm going to be linking our channel homepage um, on and off throughout the chat. So if there's a tutorial or a certain something you're looking for, if you just go to the homepage and pop in, like pop into the search area, you should be able to find um, anything we've done that way. That includes the uh, flying disc. Okay, guys, we've just finished row four. Row four, you should have 32 stitches in this row, but because we're using bulky weight yarn, we're, what you really want is a circle. So if you have something that looks mostly circular, don't worry so much about your stitch count. Um, this is a toy and it's very forgiving because we're just making a sphere. So now we're going to start crocheting just straight. We're not increasing anymore. We're going to work a single crochet into every stitch around. So if you have 32 stitches like I do, you're going to have 32 stitches at the end of every row for the next four rows. So just some straight crochet. I've marked the front of a stitch with my stitch marker that's directly in alignment with where row one kind of turns into row two. So I know that after I've worked four more rows, that's where I kind of want to end. And if you're trying to count your rows, I'm just going to hold it as flat as I can. So you can sort of look for the bumps. So there's row one, there's row two, row three, and row four. So you can sort of see the bumps emanating out from the center. You can just count the ridges and that's your row count. That's an easier way to do it. So now we're just going to single crochet one in each stitch all the way around for four rows. <laughs> We need like a, a rain, a falling rain sound. <laughs> oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, it would just it would just sound like static though on the mic. That's true. I think, but we could try. Um, this is a super chat from Mary. Hi, Mary. Thank you so much. 
Mary says, do you think it could be stuffed with plastic bags? Absolutely. So they could be used in the water. Yes, absolutely. Just remember that you've got plastic bags in there and don't wash it in hot water or put it in the dryer because that would make an absolutely gross mess. <laughs> now, I would, I would also have to recommend if you're going to use plastic bags, you should probably shred them into strips. Actually, you don't even have to do that. No, because if you crumple up a bag, but leave it intact, it's gonna, like water will get in there and it, it, it'll never dry. Yeah. You're going to end up with like a moldy ball. Yeah, I was going to say you don't want to you don't want to pack it too tightly. Oh, okay. So for example, like one or two gro gro standard grocery bags, mm -hmm. those ones that we're, you know, slowly getting rid of. Yeah. Uh two of those just stuffed into this would probably be enough to keep it uh, maybe even three if you want it to be a little a little uh, tighter but you don't crumple it up you're gonna I'll show you how to stuff when we get to that point but you probably would only need two at max three of those shopping bags and that way um, they won't contain they won't kind of hide water in little pockets and then you know gradually start to smell funny uh but yeah you make a great <laughs> point mr and stitches uh sherry says that uh she 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 made the flying discs for her two grandsons <laughs> and they love them but when they're not playing with them they wear them around as hats hey <laughs> and why not why not stylish boys they are very stylish <laughs> that's funny i love it Oh my gosh. It look it does look like those hats, like those French style. The beret. The beret. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's kind of the same concept. We did a tutorial on making a beret, actually, um, and we use the single crochet. But of course, you can use any stitch you want when you're making um, a beret. I'm gonna refill my coffee, so. All right. I'm also gonna refill your tea. Oh, thank you. Here, let me get out of the way for you. Lovely, thank you. Oh, that looks nice. I will take a sip of that right now. <laughs> okay, enjoy. Oh, oh, I love teapots. They keep your tea hot. <laughs> All right, I'm working on my second row of just straight single crochet now. So this would be row, let me see, six. I'm on row six. And I'm just working around and around and around. Now, if you have loose tension, you might notice that your um, your flat circle is still flat. If you have tight tension, you might notice that it's really, really bowl shaped. And if you have just sort of loose, moderate tension like me, you're gonna find by row six that it's starting to curve into a bit of a bowl shape. But either way, whether you've still got a flat disc, whether you're really, really kind of turned into a bowl or whether you're just starting to turn into a bowl now, don't worry about it. We're just making a spear. And because we're going to stuff it, that will give you a lot of control over the shaping of it as well. So uh, this is a very, <laughs> very friendly little pattern. Uh, you don't have to worry too much about the stitch count. You don't have to stress out about your tension. Um, it's just nice with the bulky, fluffy yarn because you don't really see spaces in between your stitches, um, which is great because we're going to stuff it and we don't want any stuffing coming out. Um, I will be using that pillow stuffing I showed you earlier. But like I said, you could use um, plastic bags. That was a good suggestion, especially if it's going to be for the pets. Um, and that crunkly sound, cats love that. I don't know if any of you have cats, but the crinkling sound of a plastic bag, they just, they love that for some reason. Um, you can also chop up socks or old t-shirts or just clothing you were maybe, you know, just completely done with and maybe it's not good enough to send to the secondhand store. I love to recycle my clothes. So if my clothing has just, you know, been literally worn to pieces, then I will continue to take it to pieces and I will use it as stuffing. Or if it's got nice sort of fabric, I might hold it back for little tiny craft projects. But typically I don't like to toss out fabric of any kind because it's always got a good use somewhere. Um, and you can also use leftover yarn. So if you've got a bunch of yarn you don't really like, um, you've got some tail ends and you don't really see yourself doing a, a super scrap project anytime soon, um, you can just use all that yarn as stuffing as well. And you can mix your fibers. You don't have to worry about, um, if you're just using yarn as stuffing, it doesn't matter whether it's all acrylic or acrylic and wool or acrylic and polyester or whatever combination is just fine. And I'm guessing I'm going to end up using about 100 grams of this ball. Um, it might end up being a little bit less. I really like the soft, 
feel of this yarn. Um, this is my first time working with Burnett Blanket Twist, and it's a lot softer and fluffier than the regular Burnett Blanket. I'm going to say it's somewhere between, it's like a cross between the Blanket yarn and the Pipsqueak yarn, if anybody's familiar with those two things. So it's got a lovely sort of soft fluffiness to it. I think this is just going to be the nicest little, little play ball. And remember, if you're new to working with bulky yarn, and you don't have to go as quickly as I do, I'm pretty familiar with working with bulky yarn, but if you're having trouble figuring out where your next stitch is, just make a stitch. So you work your work a single crochet, and then if you're not sure, just run your finger back alongside it and you'll find the next one. And you can just sort of feel your way all the way around. There's the next one. You can feel your way all the way around. And pretty soon, you'll start to kind of know instinctively where the next stitch should be because you will, you will get sort of used to the size of the stitches. Um, so it's just kind of, if you're getting going, then just feel for it and pretty soon you'll be zipping along. <laughs> I'm trying to remember, Connie here is asking about a tea cozy. And I know we did the owl. Yes. But did we do any others? No. Because I can't remember. I think the only one we've done so far was the owl. Is the owl. Yeah. So that is also on our channel. I love that tea cozy. And that's fun too. We did it. There was sort of an introduction to the um the scallop stitch in that tutorial as well. Because we use that in um in the shape of we we that's the stitch we use to make up the bulk of the body of the owl. So yeah, we should probably do another tea cozy. I love tea cozies. And um, there's just so many neat little things you can do with them. Oh, yeah. All right, I'm gonna stop for a second and I'm gonna count up my rows. I think I probably have one more to go, but I just wanna be sure. So let's see here, row one. Kelly Joe suggests a dolphin eight. as a tea cozy. No, I've done eight. A dolphin. Ooh. Oh, that's cute. That'd be cute. A little whale. I think I'm going to write that down. Yeah. Dolphin. Dolphin and whale. And or. And or whale. Whale. <laughs> Mary, uh, Mary sex that. Tea cozy. For the dolphin. All right. I like that. That's cute. Okay. A little quick recap here. We've done four rows of increasing on our little ball. So row one started with eight single crochet. We doubled it up in row two to 16. Then we went to 24 and then the 32 in row four. Then we did four rows of straight single crochet. Now, if you haven't quite caught up to me, don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> obviously you can always come back and watch this later when it's, it's a regular old video, but you should have, after your first four rows of increase, you'll now have four rows of just straight old single crochet. And again, you can count your rows by finding the bumps. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I've finished eight rows. And now I'm going to start to decrease. So four rows of increase, four rows of straight single crochet. And now we're going to begin to decrease right after I have a sip of my tea. Mm, lovely. All right. <clears throat> when you are decreasing, the most typical stitch you sort of see used in a decrease pattern is a single crochet, two stitches together. If you're using single crochet, if you're using half double crochet, it would be half double crochet, two stitches together. Uh, double would be double crochet, two stitches together. So because we're using the single crochet stitch, we're going to decrease by using the sing single crochet, two stitches together. Uh, it's definitely one of my favorites because it helps keep down the spacing and you want to work not too tight, uh, a little tighter than maybe you might normally, but but don't don't try not to work too too tight because you don't want to create big gaps in between your spaces. <laughs> Tea time. Hmm. <laughs> we have a super chat from Angela. Angela, hi, thank you. I believe Angela is in very hot Texas right mm. now. I'll take it. 
Uh, <laughs> Angela says, would love to do a longer lacy beach cover up. Ooh, yes. Um, I actually do have plans to try and do a beach cover up this year. Uh, I'm just working on making it so that everybody can figure out um, their perfect sizing. So I'm very close, but we do have something like that coming. Uh, and hopefully soon, because the weather is starting to turn nicely. But I will write that down just to make sure I don't forget. Thank you so much. Another suggestion is a panda as a tea cozy. Oh, yeah. I'm going to write that down, too. Panda I love pandas. Cute. Panda tea cozy. Okay. To decrease two single crochet together, first... You find the, the next, so you're gonna work across the next two stitches. So you put your hook through the next stitch, pick up a loop just like you would if you were going to make a regular single crochet, but you don't do anything. Instead, you jump to the next stitch, put your hook through it, pick up a loop, and now you have three loops on your hook. So the loop you began with and the loops you picked up in each of those next two stitches, yarn over and pull back through everything. So that is single crochet, two stitches together. We're doing the decrease in the reverse pattern that we did the increase. So we're going to work a single crochet into each of the next two stitches. So this row, we're gonna go from 32 back down to 24. So single crochet into each of those next two stitches. And then we're back at the beginning of the little decrease set. So we're going to <laughs> single crochet two stitches together. and then single crochet into each of the next two stitches. <laughs> single crochet two stitches together. Single crochet into each of the next two stitches. This twist wants to twist. All right, I'm back at the beginning. Now, if it's too difficult for you to see that that is a single crochet, two stitches together, so I know because that's the first one I've come across and I'm back at the beginning, then you can do like what we were doing before and mark it with a stitch marker. What did I do with that? Is it this guy? Oh, I still have it on here, Never mind. <laughs> oh, this is your collection <laughs> of stitch It's my collection markers. of stitch markers. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to mark my last stitch once again. So it's just the same as if you were doing the increase. You can mark the last stitch of your row with a single cro with a, a little pin or a stitch marker or even a piece of fabric. Just so if you have trouble, you know, you can't keep count because you keep getting distracted or you can't actually see the first single crochet two together stitch because it's a bit tricky to see with the bulky yarn. It's just an easier visual way of knowing that you're back at the beginning. So that was row nine. In row nine, we went from 32 stitches down to 24 stitches. So you should have 24 stitches all the way around now. And we're going to continue to decrease. So now we're going to begin with a single crochet, two stitches together. And single crochet once into the stitch after that. So again, we're doing the reverse of the increase patterns. Single crochet two stitches together and single crochet once into the next stitch. And if you have trouble finding it, remember just to run your fingers alongside it. And you're gonna repeat this little single crochet two stitches together, single crochet once into the next stitch all the way around. And we're going to decrease our stitch count from 24 all the way back down to 16. And I'm gonna pause for a sip of tea. 
we're getting all kinds of suggestions for teapot cozies. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well, make sure I'm you're... making a note here. Okay, super. A lot of funny ones. A duck. Aw. That'd be cute. <laughs> Uh, a few people were talking about the um, little cactus. Oh. So I just let everyone know we, we do have a tutorial for that. We little, do. A little cactus in a pot. Yeah. He makes a great little pin cushion. All right. So at the end of row 10, you should be down to 16 stitches, and you should have something that looks like this, almost like an ancient little pot. We are now going to start stuffing our our little balls. So you're going to pull up on your hook and get your hook out of the way. Leave yourself a nice big loop so that it doesn't start to unravel on you. And you can put your, should be able to put your entire fist <laughs> inside it. Grab your stuffing. So I will be using some pillow stuffing. You want to start with um, not too small chunks, but decent sized chunks. If you're using plastic bags, just crumple them um, ever so slightly or start taking it by pieces and just kind of cramming it in gently but don't super crush it because like Mr. Stitches says you don't want water or moisture to get in there and get trapped and then start to stink and get mildewy that's gross um, so just use a, a mild crumpling <laughs> habit if you're going to use the plastic if you're using pieces of t-shirt or socks or leftover fabric scraps or yarn scraps same thing just, you know, stuff it in, not too densely, not too tight, because you do want this ball to um, be soft. So if someone was going to catch it, you want them to be able to catch it. You don't want it to be too heavy because you don't want it to knock things over. Uh, but you do want it to maintain its round shape. Looking good. Yeah. Yeah. There's going to be a lot of happy puppies and kitties out there. <laughs> puppies, kittens, and, and, and kids. <laughs> and, and, and little guy, little kids. It, it really is nice to have a selection of fun indoor toys. Um, the soft frisbee, the little bunch of balls, maybe some bean bags. You know, you can have some soft games set up that is still kind of, you're, you're, you're still able to be physical, but you're not throwing around something hard or something super bouncy. It's just good to kind of keep that in mind because we do... We do benefit from maintaining a bit of physical activity, even when it's kind of cold or wet or rainy outside. Mm -hmm. So I'm <clears throat> I'm stuffing my ball to make sure that I have a nice sort of round shape happening here. Lots of great tea cozy ideas. <laughs> great. How's that tea of yours? It's still warm? It's still warm, yeah. Do you want some more? No, it's okay right now, thanks. I think I can definitely put in a little bit more. So let me grab a little more stuffing. Yeah, Dizzy, that is right. Indoor For indoor bowling. Oh, my gosh, absolutely. There you go. See, sparked a new idea. We're going to have bowling. to make uh, bowling matching pins? bowling pins. I love it. I'm writing that down. Indoor bowling sets. Who does not love bowling? I love Everybody bowling. loves bowling. <laughs> indoor bowling set. I love it. Yeah. All right. I think maybe just a little bit. Okay. So my stuffing is starting to spill out the top, which is fine. I'm just going to kind of stuff it down. And now I'm going to work the next row of decrease. So we're on to row 11 now. It's also a nice short little pattern. So it's only 12 rows in general or 12 or 13 rows in total. So it doesn't take you very long once you kind of have the, have the hang of working with the bulky yarn. But we want to go down from 24 stitches to 16. So we're going to single crochet two stitches together all the way around. So you'll be single crocheting two stitches together eight times. Got a question here from Kathy. Mm -hmm. Kathy asks, do some yarns work better than others for this project? Um, yes, you can make a ball kind of out of anything, but because we're trying to make kind of a soft toy, um, the bulky weight yarn built, it works up really quickly, um, using just the 12 or 13 rows and a bit of stuffing. And that's why it's like, it's soft and it's, um, it's, it's good for indoor play. If you wanted to make really, really tiny balls using this pattern that you would, um, stuff very, sm like, mm -hmm. like really, really small ones that you wanted to bat around for the cat. You could use the same pattern, but use like a, a four, uh, a size four medium weight yarn, one strand of it, and maybe like a, 
a four millimeter hook, and that would make a much smaller ball, much denser, um, and that would be good for the cat to sort of smack around. <laughs> Um, Rachel is loving the indoor bowling idea and has an, uh, another awesome idea, an indoor ring toss. Oh, I love that idea. So I'm that's, write that down too. for sure, we could make that. Indoor ring toss. Oh my gosh, I love this. That's a great now, idea. Now, if I could just figure out how to make lawn darts for the indoor <laughs> 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 Weighted with rocks or some of the squirrels in our backyard. <laughs> We use them to weight them down. Aww. Hold on to this, buddy. Here, hold on to this. <laughs> he'd try to eat it and run he off. He would. If we, I guess if you glued a couple of nuts to it, he'd, he'd hold on for sure. <laughs> Valkyrian Wolf Song. Hey! Hello. Just catching this now. What did I miss? We are coming to the last couple of rows of our little indoor ball. So we're using a size 6 bulky weight yarn in L11 or an 8 millimeter hook. And we are just working on one of the final rows of decrease here. And I think I am back down to eight. Let me just check that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, okay, so that is the end of row 11. Um, you should be down to 16 stitches or thereabouts. Like I said, it doesn't really matter. This is just what you're going for here is a ball, a nice spherical ball shape. Um, after you finish that last row, you wanna just take an I take the opportunity to put in a little more stuffing. Again, we're going for something as round as possible. So you just kind of keep, kind of keep tucking it in with one thumb and pulling up on the fabric around it because that will help to shape it into this ball. You could also squeeze it a little yeah, bit Yeah, and um, you're making like a super light fluffy version, mm -hmm. but if someone wants to make something that's a little more rugged, little you can use a t-shirt, t-shirt, uh, your old t-shirts all yep. stripped away. Um, strips of t-shirt or sock is um, also washable and it's uh, a great way to recycle and it's also makes much heavier um, stuffing. So I have stuffed a couple of our big fluffy pillows using that stuff. So I, I made a big heart and a big star and I used um, chopped up t-shirt as the stuffing and they are nice heavy weighted pillows. So uh, what you use as stuffing will definitely change um, the outcome of your little ball. Mm -hmm. All right, I think, I think that's enough for me. That makes a nice round ball. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. Mm. That makes a nice round ball. Everybody loves playing with uh, balls in the house, Absolutely. especially kids. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I remember uh, being a kid. That was like out of all the toys in the world, there was nothing better than a, than like tossing a ball around with a friend. Yes, yeah, rolling it's, it, you know, trying to get it into things, get it into this, you know, it, yeah. setting up a bunch of buckets, buckets and like and, trying to. Oh yeah, it's like, it's like uh, ski dropping ball. it downstairs. You know what my sister and I used to do when we were really little? What? Remember those super crazy bouncy well, balls? Bouncy balls, I like love the, those. the ones from the 80s. Yeah, I, I they probably those. still make them. But Maybe. you would bounce, like drop them and they would bounce mm -hmm. higher than... We used to dump, uh, throw them in the bathtub <laughs> and we would... It would be a race. Who's Who's got into the oh, drain into the, first? Oh, fun. And sometimes it would take like five minutes for what... <laughs> I still remember that today. It still makes me makes me smile. Makes me want to go do it right now. You want to do that yeah. <laughs> after the tutorial? Go play with some we'll put class. down some wagers. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Oh my gosh. Okay, everybody, we're up to row 12. If you finally pushed in enough of that stuffing, you feel like you've shaped it into a nice round ball, mm -hmm. we're going to close up the top. Now, when I say this is 12 or 13 rows, it's because you might want to use an extra row at the end to just close in any spaces that you might have. And this is entirely due to whether you may have tight tension or loose tension. Um, so if it takes you 12 rows, if it takes you 13 rows, doesn't matter. We just want to close up that top. So we're going to work some single crochet two stitches together again. So we're gonna do that four times all the way around. Single crochet two stitches together. Remember, try not to be too, too tight because you don't want to have big holes opening up between your stitches. But if you do have them, don't worry because we're going to cinch everything shut uh, with some yarn tail once we're done. I already yeah. want to play with this. Yes, exactly. Uh, Kathy says a heavier ball for teen boys and a basketball net. Yes, actually, I have a for net sure. written down because I love that idea too. Yep. 
All right, we so put a little net that's the end of row 12. I did two single crochet, two stitches together, four times all the way around. There's about a finger sized hole left in the middle. And now we're gonna start cinching everything shut. So cut yourself a nice long length of tail. Get the ball out of the way here. <clears throat> I'm gonna have a quick sip of my tea. Can you make a bat to go with this ball, says Mary? Ooh. No. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> now um, we might start smacking things off. <laughs> but but we might you might need to add a little something extra to a bat if you want it to actually work. Yeah, it might need it like a, a piece of dowel, like a, a little piece of dowling down the center yeah. of it, just to give it a bit of room. Yeah, maybe just to make it a bit stronger. Yeah. Otherwise you go to whack the ball and <laughs> <laughs> like a dead fish, yeah. <laughs> like uh, cooked spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody, we're going to cinch. We're going to slip stitch into the next stitch quickly just to kind of bring our stitches down to the level of the space or the I should say the level of the row. So we're going to slip stitch into the next stitch and then we're going to fasten off. So grab that tail, pull it all the way through that loop and pull tightly, but not too tightly because you don't want to break your yarn. Grab your big yarn needle <laughs> with the big eye and sort of thread up that whole tail. Make sure it doesn't split on you. And now we're going to weave the tail in and out through the spaces on either side of the stitches of that last row we did. So just in and out through those stitches and then tug kind of tightly. It should completely close up the space. So you shouldn't have a hole there now. Now we want to deal with some of these little spaces that are between the stitches from where we were decreasing. So again, take your needle and your yarn and you're just going to start weaving your tail through the fronts of the actual stitches. So not around the stitches, through the mm. front of the stitches. Getting some really great engineering ideas here from everybody well, that's because on how to, how, to, how to make the bat work and how to make the bowling pins work. This is a this, this is, is great. A Thanks super, everyone. Super creative. Room full of engineers yeah, we have. Super creative bunch. <laughs> Sounds like a lot of the USA is getting um, rain and rainstorms and thunderstorms wow. too. Must so be a big is, cloud. Yeah. Big it's been cloud. pouring here all day too and we're in we're in sort of south central Ontario. Uh, yeah, it's been raining for almost 24 hours straight now. We're getting to about I know it started uh, in the middle of the night. In I think. the middle of the night, and it was going all night. So just to kind of catch you up, I, what I'm doing is I'm slowly running my needle through the fronts of the stitches, and then kind of pulling the 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 thread on the taunt side. So I'm just pulling it ever so gently, and that's helping to get rid of the spaces all the way around um, any spaces you might have between stitches that you don't you don't want your stuffing kind of poking through. It's kind of a way of, of surface cinching up your spaces. And this is a this is a great trick for all amigurumi and any kind of toys. So if you've got decreasing rows and you have spaces in between your stitches, leave yourself a nice long tail at the end and then just slowly go around uh, working your tail through the fronts of the stitches and then just pulling it slightly tight, not too tight. And that will help cinch everything shut. And once you've got all those little spaces taken care of, so if you kind of squeeze the ball a little bit and you don't really see any spaces that you're worried about, then you can double back, double back on those stitches and start weaving your tail back and forth, back and forth, like we do at the end of most projects. And that will just help lock it in place. You don't have to worry about knotting it um, because especially if you're using this Bernat blanket yarn, because it's kind of, um, I wanna use the word sticky, Grabby, I guess is probably a better word. It won't un it won't come undone. So if you backtrack through several stitches, and it doesn't matter which ones because this is all the same color, this little tail isn't going to be seen. Backtrack through a bunch of stitches, and then backtrack again. So hop over top. There's there's a loop. I'm going to hop over top of it so that I don't accidentally undo everything I just did, and just keep running that needle through stitches and I'm going to do this until I've woven in the entire tail. That way I know it's not going to come undone. Your tea's getting low. Oh, we can't have that. We can't have that. Thank you.
Would you like a candy? Oh, um, yes, I would. Hmm, I'll take that one. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, That'll help your throat. That will. All right. I have a little bit of tail left. I'm going to just stick my needle into the actual ball. And I'm going to just bury the rest of that little tail inside the ball. There we go. Voila, one indoor ball. Oh my gosh, I love this. I want to play with it now. <laughs> it's nice and light and soft and <laughs> round and it's not going to hurt anybody if anybody gets beamed on the head with it. So this is a great indoor toy. Um, if you're like me, you'll probably make up a basket full of them because uh, all different colors, different, different sizes maybe. Um, I, love <laughs> I love having a big basket of soft balls around uh, because if you've got little ones who are maybe practicing things like uh, gripping or rolling, if they're really small, maybe if they're slightly older and they want to start kind of playing with two and, and maybe doing a little bit of very early juggling, uh, these are the kinds of toys that you want to have on hand. They're fun to play with. You can set up dozens and dozens of different kind of ball games where you maybe have different sized pots or buckets sort of around the room and you have to stand somewhere behind a line and try to toss it into uh, the open mouth of a bucket or a pot. Uh, the smaller the opening, obviously, the more points you get if you get it in. Uh, you can lift, put different little receptacles at different heights all the way around um, the room. And you know if you're just tossing this little soft ball around, nothing's going to get harmed or broken. <laughs> so having a whole bunch of different colors is just such a nice toy to have in the house. Um, if you're a grandparent and you've got little ones that visit, this is a great indoor toy to have at the house. I'm ready, on the ready. My grandmother always had a basket of awesome toys for me whenever I came over to play. Um, so I highly recommend making up a whole bunch of these in beautiful colors. And it's just such an inviting game uh, to have. You might even want to just sit and play with them even on a nice day. It's sort of nice, quiet, soft indoor play. So that is a fun little ball toy. I was just so looking forward to being able to share that with you guys. And, and I was really looking forward to playing with this yarn. Uh, ever since we bought it, I knew I wanted to make a, bo a toy ball with it. And I just love the way it turned out. Look at how the pooling of the colors worked. So it's like a little dark in some areas, and then it goes to the light and back to the dark. You know, really you, neat. you might have the you might have the adults fighting with the children <laughs> over the ball because they're like, I want to play with it. I want to play with it. <laughs> it's so squishy. I also love squishy stuffed squishy animals. <laughs> oh yeah. Isn't that nice? La, 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 <laughs> so you've got You've got burnout blanket yarn or an equivalent soft fluffy size six yarn. Um, you can stuff it with just about anything you want. So if you're recycling clothing, recycling old pillow stuffing, whatever it is you've got, um, that makes great stuffing. And you've got the makings for an entire basket full of wonderful little soft balls. And of course you can make yourself a basket to keep them all in. Um, <laughs> we've got our big beautiful basket tutorial which you could probably fit several of these in. And uh, you can just cart the whole cart, cart the whole toy around. You can even use the basket actually as the receptacle to toss the balls into. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Soft indoor toy, all made out of scraps. If you want, make three balls, three to five balls, and toss into the basket. How many can you get in the basket? I love it. I absolutely love it. All right. I would show. I would put that on camera. There's but way the, too the much yarn in it. There, there's too much yarn in that. You know what? You're cut off. The yarn <laughs> shopping. The yarn shopping. I think has to. Uh, it's a. Uh, Gotta take a take a break. We're gonna have to take a break from. Uh, <laughs> you're making up for last year. I am. I am. <laughs> oh my goodness! All right, everybody. I hope you all enjoyed making this big soft indoor ball along with us. And um, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave them in the comment section below. Uh, like I said, we've been a little under the weather, so we haven't done comments in a few days, but we will be catching up soon. I hope. Um, so yeah, leave your comments and your questions down below. Uh, once this becomes a video, give us about oh I don't know 15 20 minutes to finish all the processing. And uh, we'll be happy to read your comments later. I hope you guys have a wonderful Friday and a wonderful weekend ahead. And uh, that maybe the, the rain will give way to some flowers very soon. Uh, I think the odd little crocus and daffodil is trying to poke its little head up around here. So that gives me hope, hope that we're gonna have a nice flowery spring very, very soon. Um, so yeah, thank you guys so much for spending some time with us, uh, for having some fun, for giving us some great suggestions for some more upcoming toys. And uh, take care of yourselves and all your loved ones, and we will see you very, very soon here.
Any closing remarks, Mr. Institutes? No, I think um, you covered everything. Everyone's loving the ball. All the <laughs> all the ideas that everybody shared are awesome. Um, the one thing I want to say is that because there was so much talk about the flying disc, um, I will add that. Oh, we'll at, link that. We'll link that mm -hmm. in the video for anyone that wants to. Yeah, uh, if anybody's go, wondering, that's what it looks yeah, like. Yeah, so now. And it really flies. Like, it really, really flies. Yeah, and it, at the beginning of that video, we've got some video showing how well it can mm -hmm. It, it can really fly, works. So. Yeah. Um, and I love the idea of using the basket. Like, if you've got kids. Yeah, we'll link that one, too. Make five five of them. Uh, make the, the big, beautiful basket. Mm -hmm. And there you go. You've got an indoor, uh, safe indoor game. Yeah. Yeah. And you've got the basket. You can tote them all over the and place. And you can tote them all over the place. Love so. it. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Now we're going to be fighting over uh, we are. who gets to play I with the ball all afternoon. I can't stop squishing this. I love the feel. Oh, that's the other thing I wanted to share with you. Someone said a mm. Mr. In Stitches tea cozy. A Mr. In Stitches tea cozy. Yes. Mm. So there's a challenge for you. I'm actually going to write that down because that's hilarious and I might actually do it. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna put a giant cowboy hat on <laughs> to match my emoji? It has to. Mr. Stitches tea cozy. All <laughs> right, everyone. So whatever the weather is, if you're hot, stay cool. If you're if you're cool, stay if you're warm. Cool, stay warm. If it's raining, stay dry. Have fun. Make a bunch of balls. And uh, if you've made some and you want to share pictures with us, you can share pictures with us on Instagram, over at Etsy in our Etsy shop, on Pinterest. And also on Twitter, we occasionally manage to catch to Twitter too, and we're at Jaden Stitches in all four locations. So feel free to upload the pictures, especially if you have fun playing with this. And uh, <laughs> we will see you guys really, really soon here. Thank you so much for spending some time with us. I hope you don't catch my cold. I don't think you can catch anything. <laughs> Not with this technology. Not with this technology. <laughs> Um, Marvelous. Oh, it looks like Granny Banani has joined us. Oh, my gosh. Hi, Granny Banani. Hello, Banani. Granny Banani. We're actually on our <laughs> way, on our way you'll, have to, you'll have to watch the video um, in a few minutes right. uh, when it becomes a uh, solid video on mm -hmm. YouTube. Probably about, about 15. 15, 20 minutes. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. And we'll see everyone next time. Yeah, very soon. Great. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Have a great night and a super weekend.